Welcome to the second video in this series where we're having a look at the uh, many useful tools in Accelerus Draw. Um, this video is mostly going to be talking about how to use Accelerus Draw to draw quite complicated molecules quite quickly using its features. Um, a little reminder before we go any further of the 3D viewing facility with a couple of uh, rings here. We've got benzene and cyclohexane. We've got the chemistry and select the 3D studio viewer. Uh, remember we can and zoom it up and then we can rotate the molecules so you can see for example that benzene over here is linear whereas cyclohexane we can adjust it down to the chair form and it's decidedly non-linear okay that's sort of reviewing what we did in the last video um, here, here's an observation on bond angle strain and biological molecules uh, this is the sort of natural bond angle of 109 degrees 28 minutes and you see these structures both in rings and in uh, chains an awful lot in biology. You see five-membered rings quite a lot in biology as well. Four-membered rings where we've got a bond angle of uh, 90 degrees are, are extremely rare and this one um, where it's got a bond angle of uh, 120 degrees is uh, almost never seen in biology. In fact, I don't think ever recall seeing an example. Now all that was preamble to point you to this molecule. And yes, it is a molecule. Um, I'll show you a full picture on the next page, but at each at each corner is a carbon atom, which also has a hydrogen atom attached to it. So what's it called? Uh, we can use the tools that Isis Draw has. Uh, beg your ban, Accelerate Draw. Isis Draw was a, a precursor of this program. Um, we go to Generate Text from Structure, and we click on our UPAC name. Um, would you like to have a guess what it's going to be called? It's called Cubane, because it is cubic a fiendishly difficult mod molecule to make uh, that I'm going to show you an even more difficult one to make in a moment uh, not, not something you're likely to come across but I'll just point it out as an example of some of the really exotic molecules which you can draw a automatically really in um, in, in Accelerus Draw. If you tried to draw that by hand in Accelerus Draw it would be, it'd be actually quite hard to do but if we go into um, chemistry and we can try to draw it so we go into generate uh, structure from text and you pack name so we'll try this and see what happens it works amazing I'm slightly amazed at that because it's, it's definitely not it's a uh, systematic name um, probably somebody said well cubane is a molecule which people might want to draw uh, so we'll include it okay so we'll talk a little bit more about cubane on the next page and there's the molecule drawn out fully um, I haven't probably drawn the hydrogens in exactly the right orientation I mean, it is quite difficult to draw but getting the square there was quite straightforward um, now there's a couple of things down here which seem a little bit exotic um, now this thing down here is called a smile string I've got a um, I've got a yeah, web page here which explains what it is uh, now these things first appeared when I was a student and they were sold as a way of getting structural information about molecules into computer systems by using a a notation, a line notation system. And SMILE stands for Simplified Molecular Input Line Entry System. Um, and some examples there. Well, we'll have a look at Cuban. One thing, uh, Wikipedia is sort of has its pluses and minuses. You should never use Wikipedia as a reference. But one of the things I've noticed recently is that it has the SMILE's information. So here's a molecule cubane and it's page about it. And if I click on show, smiles, it gives us this thing. Which when you feed it into the computer program which generates a 3D model, will automatically generate cubane. And we'll demonstrate that by going to the chemistry. Uh, generate structure from text. Now we don't want our UPAC name this time, we want smile string. So we click on that, type in our string, click on OK. And lo and behold, we get cubane. Uh, sounds very nice, um, and I'm, I'm quite impressed by the fact that Wikipedia has these small structures. It's a very useful. You're going to be in a situation where you're going to want an image of complicated molecules quite often in, in your academic careers, and you can just grab the image from Wikipedia, or you can do a more systematic way. You know, use things like the smile string or the IU pack name. Um, okay, so there's another one down here, which is a, an even more exotic version of this, where we've nitrated it to make a truly terrifying molecule uh, called octanitrocubane. Okay, there's its smile string there, so I'm going to copy that. Control C, go back into a 
select salaries and go to uh, generate from structure from text smile string and click on that and it produces this fabulously exotic molecule which is luckily very very difficult to make but this is, because this is the most powerful chemical explosive known uh, what's his name well we'll go and select this and in the way we've been doing it will generate a text from structure a upac name and there it is one two three four five six seven octanitro cubane so what's happened is the hydrogens have been replaced with nitro groups um, you've heard of trinitrotoluene tnt um, things that have lots of nitro groups and tend to be explosives and this one is a quite fearsomely explosive one it, it's, it's a very complicated process to make it and it's just as well okay moving on to more sort of biological chemistry um okay giving the game away let's delete that i'm just going to ask you what that was uh, here's, here's a five membered ring with a nitrogen in it it's said to be heterocyclic when one of the carbons is replaced by another atom such as nitrogen oxygen and sulfur we call it a heterocycle uh, these things are quite common in biology uh, i've drawn it out fully there and we'll just select it and have a look at the whole thing in the uh, discovery 3d studio viewer right i'll also turn on display as scale ball and stick and make it a bit bigger so in the first one I haven't I haven't drawn in the hydrogens, the second one I have. Uh, and when we put them in that orientation, we'll see they are linear molecules, they are uh, planar molecules rather, so they are clearly aromatic. Okay, importance in biology. Importance in biology is manifold. Uh, when four of these get together to form something called the tetrapyrrole, uh, they can have a metal atom tucked away in the centre, in the middle of them. Uh, and these are uh, seen in a range of important structures, including a couple down here which have identified corin, which is a structure in vitamin B12, uh, the structure at the centre of heme, uh, and also the structure at the centre of chlorophyll. Okay, so let's draw these molecules. Now, if we sometimes you get lucky and generate a structure from text, we'll try IU pack name for corin. And it works, amazing. So there's the. Uh, in the blink of an eye, we produce quite a complicated structure. Now, it doesn't work for heme, so what I'm going to have to do is go into um, go to this and, and find out what the what the name for heme was. And that was actually quite difficult to do, to find the systematic name. I ended up searching in this quite useful uh, website, uh, Chemical Industry, where you can search for lots of different things. And it has IUPAC names. So there's the IUPAC name of heme. The molecule at the centre of hemoglobin. So I'm just going to select that. Control C. Go back into here and go to generate structure from text. Again, we're going this time we're going back to our UPAC name. So we click on that. And there we go. We have the heme structure at the centre of hemoglobin. Now it's drawn it a little bit differently to the way you'll often see it, in that it's put the iron atom a bit offset rather than coordinated between these nitrogen atoms and the uh, the tetrapyrrole ring sorry just bang the table there um but it's a good way of drawing it if you want to sort of draw in the coordinate bonds it's quite easily do yourself just move this iron over here then draw some bonds to it using the normal bond tool it's quite straightforward to do okay moving on uh, um here's a, a blank uh, tab on which we're going to insert a model of vit a vitamin b12 um so as usual, what we need to do now is find out its IUPAC name. So again, I've gone to the chemical industry website, and its IUPAC name is there. So we'll just copy that. Go back into Accelerus. Uh, chemistry generate um, structure from text, IUPAC name. Paste it in, and there we get an image of vitamin B12, the model of vitamin B12, which is actually a bit too big for the current window we've got. So what I'm going to do is hold down Control A to select everything, and holding down the Shift key, it's important you hold down the Shift key, otherwise when you try to resize, it won't necessarily resize the same amount in both X and Y planes. Now go over to here, and when you get the two arrows, just sort of pull down to make it a little bit smaller. Um, it always asks this if you want to scale new structures, any new structures you draw to the same size. In this case we don't, so we'll just click No. And then we can pick it up, and there's a, a nice uh, model of vitamin B12. Again, it hasn't included the cobalt atom in the place where you'd normally see it, which is there. Uh, but that's straightforward to do, and here's one I prepared earlier. 
Uh, there's just an image I grabbed from the web. It's not a bad image. It's um, it, it certainly represents the three-dimensional structure quite nicely. And here's just the bit of the molecule I had on the previous page when I've drawn in uh, cobalt with a number of coordination bonds going to it. Um, now, these are obviously electronic models which are used on the screen uh, when Dorothy Hodgkin worked out the structure of vit vitamin B12 by using X-ray diffraction. Um, she built a physical model, and here it is. Um, Dorothy Hodgkin won the Nobel Prize in 1964 for this work. Um, and a groundbreaking work it was. Uh, as an ancillary series, I'm going to be doing uh, another series about using physical models. Uh, specifically the orbit molecular model kits which uh, quite a few people in first year biochemistry have now signed up to buy for a bargain price it has to be said um, right so that's the end of uh, this video I hope you found it, hope you, hope you enjoyed it, hope you found it interesting thanks for listening